Can we please stop having horny people summon me? How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Flames Plays and today we are checking out the demo for Sucker for Love Date to Die For. This is available over on Steam. I'll have a link in the description box down below as well as links to my Discord, Patreon, and Twitter. And I am absolutely excited for this game because I love Sucker for Love from the Dread XP Collection as well as Sucker for Love um, First Date. And this time, I believe we are dating Roxanne, which was the character I was most excited for. Eldritch and gods. Cosmic horrors. Things beyond our understanding. To merely gaze upon their form is to abandon all hope. They are sequestered to the stars, appearing only through challenging, failure-prone rituals and unutterable incantations. Their twisted, fanatical followers require no such invitation to commit horrors beyond belief in their stead. It is then when the boogeyman lurking in the shadows isn't an obscure, imperceptible shade, but a tangible madman. I'm just gonna pick her nose. Mom, Mom here. That the vague prognostications of the stars become empty threats before the undeniably material. The simple hatchet in their hands. <laughs> Did something scary happen? So this is our new character. We're no, play, no longer playing. I believe his name was Love. Or no, Darling. That's right. In the book you're reading, did something scary happen? Hello. You're as pale as a sheet. I like your glasses. Very fashionable. And your hair. Oh, no, no. I must have nodded off and had a bad dream. Um, I know this is a super weird question, but can you tell me where I am? You're in my bookstore. In Sacramento. Are you lost? Sacramento? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I think I know where I am now. Thanks. I've been getting strange dreams lately. I can't make sense of what they've been about, but when I wake up, my heart is pounding out of my chest, and I'm not where I fell asleep. These dreams started happening the same time that people began vanishing from my old hometown, Sacramento. Even though it's a fairly remote town with a small population, there's been dozens of disappearances in the last year alone. So many that the trains don't stop at the station anymore. Concerned locals claim to have spotted angry woodland spirits at the edge of the woods, animals with too many features watching them. And outsiders can't shake the feeling that they're always being watched by an unblinking purple eye of the townsfolk. The Sacramento Stare is what they call it on the news. They're saying that the stare is how they can tell if you're an outsider at a glance. If you don't have it, they know you're not one of them. Oddly enough, I don't have the Sacramento Stare despite being born here. And even now, after returning home, I've been spared from it. Besides some lightheadedness and a dull, warm, fuzzies feeling, I don't feel any different. The girl that runs the odd bookstore also has been cursed, it seems. Um, have you made a selection? Did you find a book to your liking? It's actually kind of funny. I had just um, went to a bookstore just a few hours ago. Uh, and I was thinking about picking up two books, but I haven't actually decided on which one I want, so I figured I'd wait a little bit. Um, it's uh, The Only Good Indians. And your body is not your body. I did read the trailer for Your Body is Not Your Body. It's like an anthology of body horror by trans uh, artists or writers. And um, it, it seems interesting. Like the first one I read was decent. The second one I read, I actually really liked. Very body horror, very some some really gory stuff. I liked it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to loiter. To be honest, I don't have any money with me, but I'll come back first thing tomorrow and buy something. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading my books, but it's starting to get dark outside. With all the disappearances lately, you better hurry home. Oh, so caring. Home. Even though my family fled town when the disappearances returned, or began, I'm returning to our, my, our ancestral home in Sacramento, all because of a note that I found in my apartment this morning. Your mother's a little shook up from everything that happened, so I'm taking care of her at Graham Grimm Ikande's place. If you came to visit, it will cheer up and help her recovery. We missed you so, so much, Stardust. Oh, so that's our first, that's our character's name. But the strange thing is, or it might be a nickname, but the strange thing is my parents were two of the first people to go missing. They were declared dead since they'd been missing more than a year and missed the disappearances. This is their handwriting. My parents are the only ones that call me Stardust. Okay, it is a nickname. This is them beyond a shadow of a doubt. Whatever is going on here, I can't turn my back. I need to see them again. Speaking of, I'd better get going. Thanks for letting me doze off. I promise I'll come back real soon. Thank you for stopping in. Take care. Oh, there's some glowing eyes right there. Right, time to hurry back. I push my way through the door, leaving the warm glow of the, book the bookstore behind as the sun sets. 
Sacramento, overgrown now by oppressive canopies of foliage. From the smell of animal musk and swampy fields, you'd think this was a barn, not a city street. Every surface here is plastered with posters. Many litter the ground, and every single one is someone has, that was never found. That's why they call it Missing Person Lane now. It's where a desperate out-of-towners looking for their loved ones leave posters before going missing themselves. It's the only nav navigable foot navigable footpath left, and the most direct route to my house. I can't tell if it's the darkness playing tricks on me or what, but I'm losing my way down streets that I should know forwards and backs. Back. Wasn't I supposed to make a turn a while ago? I can't make heads or tails of the houses and landmarks I used as a kid to get around. It's like my whole hometown was replaced by an unfamiliar yet exact replica. Okay, calm down. Now if I check the note my parents wrote and compare the address numbers to the nearest house, I should be able to at least figure out if I'm walking the right way. Uh, turn into a cash receipt. That's a problem. Also, $11 for a chicken carry? No, $10 for two fried chickens? Oh, dude, two... Yo, two... You see this here? $4 burgers. Where's the Sacramento? Dude, I gotta go there. A blank grocery store receipt. When did I put this in my pocket? Where's my parents' letter? I dig through my pockets in a panic. There's no way I dropped in the bookstore, so where could it have this receipt? It has the same fold lines and dimensions as the handwritten note I had. Could I have... No, there's no way I could have missed out a shopping list as an entire letter from my parents, right? I fumble around with the note, checking the back and flipping it and turning it in a hopeless attempt to see the message again, but the receipt stays a receipt. Something is very wrong. I like that. Also, there's like this weird glitching act sometimes occurs, and I kind of like that too. I turn to hey, run. Ow! Uh, are you like blind or something? Watch where you're going, Klutzorama! Klutzorama is a great burn. I love it. It's like innocent, but also it stings. I slammed right into somebody coming the other way. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Are you alright? I should have been more careful. Whoa, she's really pretty. But what on earth is this girl doing wandering around Sacramento at night? Don't touch me. Okay. Didn't mean to. Sorry, I didn't mean to smack into you like that. I know it's not an excuse, but I was just in a rush. Oh yeah, I know. You gotta go run off and steal my boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's whatever. Totally cool. Save your breath. I already know how this goes. Wait, huh? What? Your boyfriend? Yeah. You heard me. My boyfriend. Buck is mine. No idea who Buck is. What the heck is Buck? Where are all these accusations coming from? I I don't know anyone named Buck. Huh? <laughs> really? You don't know who Buck is? Oh, there's the purple stare. His name is Buck and he likes to enjoy a nice glass of hot chocolate You're at night. You're not like from out of town, are you? The stare. It's real. I turn my head down and briskly walk past her. She starts walking alongside me. Hey, look at me. I can't let her see my eyes, no matter what. She'll notice I don't have the Sacramento stare. You can tell me. <laughs> Are you from here, or what? Yo, it's getting kind of creepy. I, I live here. Oh yeah? Look at me really quick. This is bad. Even if I make it home, she'll know where I live. What do I do? Look at me. Okay. I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring straight at her. <laughs> Bucky, hi. Got another one for you at Missing Person Lane. I break into a mad dash, running my hardest. Everything is a blur. My heart pounding in my ears can't dull at the sounds of whistles, shouts, and unidentifiable commotion coming from all sides. Panting and dizzy, I feel my body slowing down, but the image of her face on the next missing poster kicked missing person's poster kicked my legs into action once more. But no matter how far I run, the buildings refuse to change, the streets refuse to turn, and the sounds of the awakening woods refuses to abate. This is hopeless. There's a wide open clearing in the trees about one block ahead. If I can break line of sight from my unseen pursuers, I have a chance of finding some place to hide. As I near the turnoff, my exhaustion makes itself known. If this is a dead end or it's too dark to find my way, I won't have the energy to turn around and start running again. I round the corner. It's my grandma's house, sitting alone in the middle of the clearing in the woods. I thought the way to my house involved multiple turns a ways back, but I don't have time to question things as I'm already halfway up the makeshift dirt path. You know, I like this. This is going way more creepy than the original. What is that? Green butter. Oh, shoot. No one's banging at the door. For the moment, I'm not being chased. I missed the line because I tried to click on the butterfly. Hey, what's... 
I may just be staying at the entrance, but I can tell something feels off about my home, like the warm, familiar place I grew up in is long gone. I can't put my finger on it, but... This dread. Why do I feel like I need to sneak around my own house? Is someone here? My parents? Hello? I'm home? No response. Hello? Okay, yeah, I can check this out. A butterfly stuck in a web. Where's the spider? Oh, I thought I could pick it up. Uh, the Tommy room. There's a weird thingy there. Some... This is a lot of boots. I only have nine siblings, but I see at least 20 pairs of shoes here. That, that is quite a lot. Why is the map blinking? Oh, no, stop. The, the map button's blinking. Oh. Oh, I need to go up to the second floor. Okay, I see. I get it. Find your upstairs bedroom. So we're gonna go check out the Tamiya room. Okay. Dude, I hate that for some reason. The fact I actually have to open doors up. That is, this is so much, this is so cool. Dude, the developer has definitely grown past the simple game that we had before. And this is all over, like... I'm just expecting to open one and find a jump scare. Oh. That's all here now. Green windows with fog on the other side. Cool. Neat. Don't like that one bit. Well, I do like that, but... You know, not for survival reasons, just for aesthetics. Yeah, I know, that's where my, my bed is. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna work on it. I just wanna check out the house. What if I go this way? Okay, still good. No spookies yet. Just a lot of beds? I didn't even know we had this many futons. Why are there so many beds out? Okay, everything is cool. I guess we're going to step onto some people's beds. Okay, still not spooky. Still good. What a mess. The closet's been ransacked, but no valuables have been taken. There were valuables here? Oh, what is you? Ngawa? The hell's that Ngawa? Okay. I guess it's a door? What is this? Okay, well, there's nothing there. Yep, so we're gonna keep going this way, I guess. There's the hallway. And there's some stairs. I guess we're just gonna take the stairs. Oh, I hear static. I think. Uh, check the map. Alright, so this will be the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom and just wash up first. Take a look. Okay, well, found the bathroom. Just a normal looking bathroom with a giant plant in it that we can't actually inspect. That's kind of weird. Let's, can I use the bathrooms? New. No. Uh, yeah, this, this is like completely ransacked by foliage. Could be a problem. Oh, that is cool. I like that design. Love like animal skulls and things. I'll head down the hallway. I think it's the... Let's see. Yeah, it's right on, it should be right here. There you go, with the giant star in it. Stardust, that makes sense. Okay. It's a weird ritual thing. What the heck happened to my room? All this occult stuff sitting around? Has someone been living here while I was away? Those candles are lit. Whoever did this was here recently, but who? And why? Maybe there's some kind of clue in this book? There's no title to offer or anything. It smells like overripe fruit and formaldehyde. In other words, it reeks of death. My hands feel pruning and ice cold touching the cover like it's drinking the life from my fingertips. Like the very material this item is thirsty. Oh, trust me, I think a lot of people who play this game are pretty thirsty. Seeding the Black Woods. Instructions on how to corrupt the soil of a forest by using offal of a goat and the beating heart of a human. The beating what? I read and reread the passage, but it's plain as black and white. The beating heart of a human. I reread again and again, my disbelief washing away more and more each time. This isn't a joke. First, the stare that only the locals have, then the disappearances, then the supernaturally overgrown woods, and now this book describing sacrificial rituals? The truth dawns on me. Sacramento has been overrun by cultists. People haven't been spirited away by angry forest spirits. They've been abducted, and I'm next. I can't stop trembling. Should I hide, or is there even anywhere to hide? I certainly can't run. These cultists could be anywhere. I hastily th flip through the book. Maybe there's something, anything, that I can use to escape. 
Amidst hundreds of pages of indecipherable runes and obscene rituals, one catches my attention. Manifest the All Mother, or summon the All Mother. According to this, the All Mother is supposed to be a benign eldritch entity with profane powers of life preservation. Nothing else in this book looked even remotely benign. If this book is for real, then this All Mother is my best shot at getting out of here alive. Summoning a space demon is probably a bad idea, but my odds couldn't get any worse than they already are. I haven't found a single person that went missing. Besides, there's still a chance that this book is fake, right? That there's that there's an explanation for all the weirdness happening in Sacramento? I'd better hurry and do the ritual and find out. Looks like I already have everything I need to try. Alright, let's do this. Our first our first ritual. Uh, pull up the book. To summon her. Uh, and cannot harm you. Good. However, no contact with Eldritch Gods is completely safe. Uh, summon her, do the following. Douse lit candles, ensure there's an item. An idol of the black goat somewhere. Plant mister. Alright, so we gotta douse the candles. Grab a plant mister. mister. Okay, so the statue here. It looks like an idol of a goat. Only it has too many legs and too many eyes. It weighs a ton too. How'd this get up the stairs? Alright, so not doing anything with the book yet. Oh, there you go. There's the mister. You found the plant mister. At certain times of conversation, the icon will appear. You can spray the speaker with water by right clicking. This will interrupt whatever they're doing or saying. This feature is primarily included in consideration of players who dislike being hit on by older women eldritch abominations, but it has other uses too. <laughs> just, just, no, no horny. <laughs> this bottle puts you in horny jail. All right, so we're gonna douse the candles. Uh, now we can have the plant mister, we can start reading. We have a tree in front of us as well. Roxanne Selva Ascora. There we go. Let's see Goat it's Mommy. You dare call upon Roxanne? The All Mother of the Black Woods? Yeah, I saw her design back before Sucker for, Sucker for Love, the full game came out, first date. And I was like, dude, she's amazing. Like, creepy, but kind of like, you know, but also like super creepy. It's an awesome design. It worked? This book is for real? How do they get their hands on something like this? The form of the black goat of the woods assails my senses. The, the birthplace of life and final resting place of death. The maker and unmaker and all her undulating horror. I love that word, undulating. I don't know what it means, but it sounds so good. I think it means like writhing or like incomprehensible maybe? I don't know. The vile saline ooze seeps from the pores of my clenched fist as I'm overcome by an otherworldly nausea beyond reckoning. I have tolerated mortal stench upon my soil long enough. Today is the end of empty threats. All that you are, all you ever have been, shall now become mere fertilizer for my black woods. The blood trapped within my distended veins quickens, surging agitatedly beneath the flesh of my cheeks. Your lifeblood shall soak the earth. Nurturing my young as they spring forth from the wicked soil to feed upon your ever-suffering remains for all of time! At my hands, you will die again and again and again! Why are you blushing? <laughs> oh man, okay. I may have been blushing actually, but... Girl, pretty. Oh my god! <laughs> look at it, it's like it's freaking adorable! I thought I was driving you insane! All that sweating and hyperventilating? You look like you were gonna throw up! Oh, that just happens when I talk to a girl sometimes. What? My foolish mortal! Your impudence has made me very, very... <gasps> oh, forget it. What is it this time? Torture again? I love the design of it. like... Oh, can we please stop having horny people summon me? I swear, I was there trying to do some crocheting. Oh, I forget it, yeah. Why did you catch your cult mate with someone else and now you want me to pretend to be your mommy to comfort you? Cult mate? Torture? I think I've been confused from someone else, again. Out with it. You probably only have a few more moments before your lust breaks your will. So make it quick. Huh? I feel fine. 
I mean, she's drop dead gorgeous, and I feel like my heart is beating on my chest, but I don't feel like my will is breaking or anything. I am the goddess of fertility, the physical manifestation of perverse desires. And you are standing two feet away from me, at the very epicenter of my carnal influence. And you're telling me you don't feel a thing. I mean, I think you're really beautiful. And that's all? You think I'm just... beautiful? Well, I don't know if I'm really into the snout thing, but... She's cute. Come closer and take a deep breath in. So, okay, this is, I think, my chance where I can try to spray her with the anti-horny horny water, or I can just check it out. A warm floral scent washes over my senses. I feel lightheaded for a moment before it debates. <sighs> Do you hear that? Breathing. It's the most beautiful sound a living thing can make. I don't hear breathing, but I, I this is about to go ASMR. She seemed happy there for a moment before her warmness froze over once more. No. Um, how do I say this without hurting your feelings? <sighs> you already did. A goddess of lust getting rejected by her own cultist in her own dream. This is torture. This is great. Um, I don't know if this makes it worse or not, but I'm actually not anybody's cultist. What did you say? I mean, sorry, I summoned you because my life is in danger, and I thought maybe you'd be able to help me somehow? Suddenly, she lifts my chin and pulls my face close to hers. Guys, you... You're not under my influence. You're not one of them. How did you get this book? Oh, I just found it. What do you mean? I just found it on the floor. Listen to me. You are in grave, grave danger. The Thousand doesn't know you're here yet, but they will be coming for you. You've got nowhere to run. You won't be able to escape. Not while I'm still rooted here. Any road you walk will lead straight back here. You need to do the rituals in that book in order, ending with a spell that will uproot me from this location. Once I've been uprooted, you'll be able to run for it and hope for the best. Don't let anything happen to the book. If you lose it before I'm uprooted, you'll have no way out. A chill is running up my spine. Run for it? No way out? Grave danger? Just what have I got myself into? Am I scaring you? I know it's a lot, but you have no choice if we're ever going to escape from Sacramento. Wait a minute. Did I just hear something right? Hold on. It sounds like you're trying to escape, Things too. Things have gotten... messy with my cultists. Messy in a bad way, I mean. My followers have turned against me and are abusing me and my woods' power to kill outsiders indiscriminately. She's a peaceful little eldritch god, mommy thing. This is a nightmare that I'd just like to end. But neither of us can leave without the uprooting ritual being performed. But I should warn you. These incantations and rituals can be terrifying for a non-cultist to perform. Even successfully completing them can have grave consequences. Okay, she's at least being up front. Lynette, um... Lynette didn't, um... Leanna? Yeah, I think it was Lynette. Uh, she didn't, like, give us any forewarning or anything like that about, you know, the hand forming on her face or the fact that we're gonna grow tentacles out and stuff like that. She just let Darling go off. These rituals will test your metal in ways that... I'll do it. What? Really? <laughs> You're just okay with what I'm saying? I am. If there's a way out of this, just tell me how and I'll Are do you it. sure? So many people have gone missing in Sacramento. I'm not letting the same happen to either of us. Not today. Let's not waste any time. Start with the spawn partner ritual first. You'll need it. Spawn partner? Okay. Let's see. Uh, spawn partner. Yeah, figures the next one. Why can't I go home? Why can't I sleep like a thousand spiders on my skin? Where have I gone? Oh, wow. So it's not going to let you jump ahead or anything like that. Okay. Just double checking. This one. Light ritual candles. The color of the flame does not matter. So please choose the color you find comforting. Let's see. What colors we got? Red, black, green, blue, pink, purple. Oh, I love purple. Okay, we're going to go purple. Have your choice of aromatic herb on your person. Pick a scent you find pleasant. Uh, do not imagine something you can't put back. Um, okay. I mean, so, we need an aromatic. Oh, what? Oh my god, she looks so sad. She looks like she's going through a breakup right now. Sitting on the bed with her tucking her knees into her chest like that. Uh, so I need to... Oh, 
Lavender is kind of... Oh, there's all here. It's all here. Rosemary, lavender, or thyme. Or no, mint. I like mint. I like mint. All right. Um, imagine your ideal partner. I mean, to be honest, it has to be my wife. Just, just kind of cute, I know, but it's, it'd be my wife. So let's go ahead and read this slowly. Did we just teleport Roxanne behind us? Okay. Just, I'll have to tell my wife that she reminds that a goat lady reminds me of her early. Wait, I can explain. Go ahead. I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to be bashful, especially after all that time you spent playing coy. In view of the circumstances, perhaps I will allow you to be my partner. Really? And that's okay with you, even though we just met? Well, it's sudden, and it'll be a long, long time before I could ever trust a human again. But I'm not exactly the god of taking things slow. We need to bust out the water bottle. Besides, I already have a thousand children. <laughs> There's no harm in a thousand and one. I thought our character was female, but wait, what, wait, what are you talking about? Taking me as your partner? I thought you were talking about just being my girlfriend. Thought, you thought the two definitions of partners that are fertility goddess was referring to the platonic meaning? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love both our character and Roxanne. There's three meanings of partners. Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is great. Are you still joking around while standing so close to me? You should be melting with desire. Being anywhere within a mile of me should amplify your lust a thousandfold. Maybe our character is just ace. Oh, that's an. Oh, yeah, okay, there you go. Oh, that's an easy one. A thousand times zero is zero. Right. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yep. So, I take it you haven't had children yet? Nope. And. You. You aren't with child now? No. You're going to die here, and there's nothing I can do to help. What? You're really not going to help me just because I don't have kids? It's not that I won't. It's that I can't. I am an entity of untapped cosmic potential. And I want a big family. The biggest family possible. I want every living thing on Earth to be a direct descendant of me or one of my followers. Interesting. Those that best serve that goal receive a fraction of my power. My most devoted followers are bestowed with gifts like extended lifespans, rapid healing, physical enhancement, and in some cases, immortality. And those followers are the ones looking for you. You, on the other hand, have closed yourself off to my dark influence and are mortal and vulnerable. No kids, no powers. What if I don't want powers or kids? What if I drained the life from your body and then used it to fertilize my wicked soil until something that will give me grandchildren comes crawling out? Wait, are you saying you're my mommy now? I take an involuntary step backwards. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Are you alright? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Just, you know, terrified, shaking in my... Whatever genitalia our character has. Let's move on to the next ritual so we can get out of here, okay? Mm. Holy moly, that was freaking scary. She's really taking this hard. I better go get the stuff for the next ritual. Which is... Let's see. Alright, so we're going to have to go to different rooms to collect the things. Epicurean Feast. Meat from a living thing within... Meat from a living thing that died within the black woods. Check the meat rack in the dining room. Milk with the black goat. Store bought 2% is apparently fine too. It's in the fridge. So dining room, fridge. A receptacle filled to the broom at lifeblood. With life liquid. Blood. They meant blood. Please use blood from now on. <laughs> life liquid. I didn't even think about them. All right. Okay. Red candles we need. So we need red candles. Uh, we gotta go out to the dining room. Go down the hallway. Turn around. Down the steps. Into this way. Go... Oh, too far. I went one, I went one too far. 
Oh, right here. Yep. Go through here. I believe this is the dining room. Or I think it might be to the left here. Yeah, it's to the left here. Oh, no, it's a, it's a karaoke room, of course. How could I not think of... Oh, whoa, where the... Okay. Definitely not where I thought it was. This should take me to the hallway, then. What the hell? It's like shadow people around here? I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Alright. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't have to keep shining the stars at me. Alright. Let's see. Nope, not that. This. Just go straight forward. And then down here. Nope. That's the wrong way. Oh, God, there's two. There's multiple hallways here. Okay, that's what threw me off. Yep, now we're good. Nope. Where did it? It's the other, it's the other step way. Other hallway, I mean. So we go down this way. Got it. Got it. God, I'm getting like Fantasy Star flashbacks. Not Fantasy Star Online, the original, the OG Fantasy Star. Uh, map. Uh, so we go forward one more and then to the right. Over here. Yep, dining. Okay, we made it. What the hell is that? Oh. Meat. I tear a hunk of meat from the hook. This should be what I'm looking for. It smells kind of strange. Is this beef? Pork? Whatever it came from, it was huge. I should probably move. I should move on before I count the number of legs hanging on hooks. It's just quite a lot. Alright, so we go to the kitchen and get the 2% milk from there and a vessel to hold blood. I don't know how much blood we need. 2% right, milk. Oh, got a strawberry milk. Okay, this is the milk of the black goat. It just looks like a regular cart in a store brought, bought strawberry milk with a label slapped on it. I guess the cultists would have a hard time getting the real thing from Roxanne now that their relationship has soured. No pun intended. This should be good enough. Are we? Do we really just make a joke about? Okay, this is probably the bottle. It looks like cooking oil, except it's in a gallon container and it smells like burnt hair and sulfur. The color is black as soot too. Oh, guess I don't pick that up quite yet. Um, all right. Wait, do I still need to grab more things? Uh, items? Strange meat, milk, and then a receptacle filled to the brim with life, liquid life. All right. Uh, I guess we don't really find just blood chilling out and about. I'm gonna go back here. Go through here. Uh, we're looking for blood. Oh god, there's a giant <laughs> thing. A receptacle filled through the room with liquid life. Blood? An unsettling amount of it. This is what the ritual calls for? A chill just ran up my spine. Am I being watched? Of everything I need, I get I need to get out of here fast. Okay, so we can go, yeah. Go straight, straight. Nope. That's the wrong way. Turn around all the way. There we go. Then we go straight, straight. And then to the left. I'm really expecting there's something to be there when I open a door up. This is such a, a good mechanic for building up tension. Because it's like, if there is something there, whoo boy. It's going to get you good. Go down this hallway, to the right, got the stairs. Turn around, down the hallway. And here's our door once more. Still good. Cool. So, we got everything, we can do this now. Uh -huh. Hi. Well done. Yeah. Looks like you did everything perfectly. Impressive. Thank you. Nothing to it. If all the rituals are this easy, we might just get out of here. Perhaps so. I... um... I don't want to leave things as they are between us. 
Your life is your own. I'm sorry for losing my composure. No, oh, that... I nearly forgot about that already. I'm a little surprised a little god would bother apologizing to a human at all. I've given it some thought. And while you may be blasphemously abstinent, you're the only person in the world that can help me. You see, if you step within range of my words, any desire you have that will lead you closer to me is amplified to such an intense degree that it's unbearable. And most of the time, it's lust. Oh, but maybe for her, it's love. Anyone who is led here seeking carnal or animalistic pleasures develops the Sacramento stare and becomes a cultist. Interesting. If you are brought into my woods for any other reason, you don't become one of my chosen thousand, and your desire will make you futilely search the woods for what isn't there. You'll forget to eat and sleep, and you'll search and search until you die of exhaustion and become fertilizer for the woods to grow further. Her parents are her parents. So obviously they had her, so they would be a cultist then. They went, they're not dead or missing. You're the only person to reach me without joining the cult or dropping dead. Thanks in no small part to the fact that you don't have lust to amplify. My only question is, if you're not here for lust, why are you here? I like, I actually like this. It's, it's using a, uh, a less common trope, or not, I'm sorry, trope, uh, a less common characteristic in terms of someone's personality and lifestyle as a pro in this case, because we can actually control ourselves around Roxanne. I pulled the receipt out of my pocket. <laughs> I came looking for my parents. This used to be a handwritten letter from them saying they were here in this house, but once I got here, it turned into a blank receipt and won't turn the back. The woods have indeed toyed with your emotions to bring you here. That paper was likely never a letter from your parents, but the woods made you believe it was. I'm sorry. So they really aren't still alive? They were likely consumed by my woods no more than three days after they disappeared. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. The dust has long settled on my parents being gone, but the grief never faded. Eat. It'll give you your strength back. The woods won't let you feel how tired you are. I don't feel tired at all, but come to think of it, I felt like it was gonna I felt like I was gonna collapse when I made it to this house. I don't think I've eaten since I got the letter either. I take a few bites and the tears abate. There. there. It'll be alright, Stardust. Oh. Stardust? How did you know my parents' nickname from Anything that dies within my black woods becomes a part of it. A part of me. Their love for you likely lives on in me. Oh my god, she actually is goat mommy. I guess that settles it. My parents really are gone. That's the only way she can know that name. That's outright terrifying, but I feel strangely comforted that part of them is still here somewhere. Um... I hope this is an offensive question, but how come this book said you were benign? All the missing people and the people that came looking for them, you, you ate them? It was them? never supposed to be like this. I came bearing gifts of safe childbirth for infant and mother. Hungerlessness. Disease immunity. But instead, but instead, my own worshippers tormented me until it broke my hearts. Now my woods are bloodthirsty. And I'm forced to watch innumerable die. I... I love this character! <laughs> I say as I shake the screen so much that I start shaking due to my webcam. Uh, like, she... She doesn't want to be evil. But why? How could somebody do something like that? How could somebody have so much hate in their heart? Because it's had an eternity to accumulate. What was that? It sounded like something breaking downstairs. coming? Already? No, 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 no! I forgot. Roxanne is just as scared as I am. I need to be more careful of showing fear for her sake. It could just be the house. This place is old and rotten in some places, so time, sometimes the house shifts on its own. I'll check it out. It sounded like it came from the kitchen. Thanks for playing! Sit tight! Another episode of Sucker for Love at Date to Die For is coming up! Oh man, that's a, that a good timing! Alright, I was hoping for at least one good scare with the door system, but to be honest, Super creepy. Love the beginning. Uh, and then I love everything after meeting Roxanne because, like I said, she's a very, she seems like a very complex character. She doesn't want to be evil. She just wants to, you know, help people. 
but her cultists have warped her and her beliefs into something that she doesn't want to be. That's kind of cool. I like that. And I like our character. I, I, I love the banter back and forth that we have at Roxanne. Love Roxanne's design. Uh, new goat mom. Sorry, move over Toriel. But this is so good. I can't wait for the full release. Let me know what y'all thought about Sucker for Love, Date to Die for in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. And also make sure to subscribe to get these release new content. And as always, have a great day. Remember to burn bright. I will talk to you all later. Bye.